If I were to ask you who are the top relievers in Major League Baseball, some of the lists you might name are Josh Hader, Rocio Iglesias, Emmanuel Classe, Edwin Diaz, Clay Holmes, or maybe even Liam Hendricks. But you know who I don't think you would mention? Joe Mantiply. Oh, you've never heard of this man? Well, that makes sense. Oh, you don't care about this man? Well, let me introduce you to him. Joe Mantiply was born March 1st, 1991 in Virginia. He was soon attend Virginia Tech before being drafted in the 27th round to the Detroit Tigers in 2013. Pretty safe to say that this is a non-prospect. Now, Mantiply was a solid in the minors. He pitched to a sub 3A through most of his time there, but he never felt destined to be anything more than a minor leaguer. He never once cracked the Tigers top 40 in prospect rankings, and he never had lights out stuff. He was soon DFA and then claimed on waivers by the Yankees back in 2016, I do believe. He would be in their minors basically full-time. He would make a few brief appearances in the Yankees in 2019 before being cut again and then put on waivers and being claimed by the Arizona Diamondbacks in 2020. Now, in 2020, he made a couple appearances for the Diamondbacks, three or four, but by 2021, he had essentially established himself into a role in that Diamondbacks bullpen. In 57 games, he pitched 39 and two-thirds innings, had an ERA of 3.4, a FIP of 2.94, and an expected FIP of 4.04. Now, by no means was he having a great season, but again, it also wasn't a bad season either. (laughs) It was one of the lone bright spots of that Diamondback squad in 2021. He entered this year with some incredibly low expectations. He was signed to a minor league deal, and... Even with these low expectations, he solidified himself as one of the most valuable relief pitchers to begin this year. Now, Mantiply is a three-pitch figure, throwing mainly a sinker, which he throws at 44%, a curve 30% of the time, and a changeup 18% of the time, which he occasionally mixes in a four-seam fastball. Now, he by no means has exceptional stuff, as he throws a sinker around 90 and a curve and a changeup that sits right around 80 to 85 so it's not like he throws everything super slow he just has a slow fat he has a slow fastball with average change up and curveball velocity so he's not like he's a Zach Granke who's going to throw a fastball and change up the same speed and then a curveball at 60 miles per hour now his curveball actually has below average break on it but his sinker and change both have over five inches of above average break so i guess that makes up for it but it is funny seeing a guy who has such bad stuff even have even below have who is pitching so good have below average stuff on one of his main pitches now if he doesn't have one exceptionally great pitch like i've mentioned how exactly like for example like clay Holmes sinker which is insanely great then how is he putting up numbers eerily close to Clay Holmes? Now, just for reference, Clay Holmes so far this year has an ERA of .29, a whip of .6, a 1.64 FIP, a 1.94 expected FIP, and a Sierra of .93. And Joe Mantiply has an ERA of .37, a .9 whip, a 1.57 FIP, 2.41 expected FIP, and a 2.11 Sierra. So the underlying numbers aren't as close as the overall ERA, which isn't a huge shocker since Holmes has basically been playing at a historic pace this year. But don't let that distract you from the fact that Joe Mantiply has arguably been one of baseball's most valuable relievers this year. And that's shown in his war stats as he is one of the highest war in all of baseball for a relief pitcher at 1.3. Now, how exactly does he do it? Well, to break it down to you, he has one of the most funky deliveries in the game. A funky three-quarter slash halfway sidearm delivery that is super tough to pick on, pick up on. And he also has some of the best control and command of this game. Now, I don't know about you, but there is nothing more fun in baseball nowadays than watching a guy come in here throw 90 miles per hour and just be able to dot guys up and get them out the Nestor Cortez's and the Joe Mantiplees or baseball are at this point becoming a huge rarity you know it's like finding a diamond now and honestly I I think it's some of the best baseball to watch and those are the two guys I always make sure to watch all the time I always love watching Mantiplee I just started getting I started watching him once I saw his historic pace and I was like I need to watch this guy and watching him pitch has been in extremely extremely sad satisfying but 
that was like some of his underlying numbers and baseball for savant has him in the hundredth percentile in walk percentage so like i said great control that doesn't always mean great command but great control and then a barrel percentage that's also at the hundred percentile which in my mind shows that he's got great command he's able to miss people's barrels which is huge if you can make it so people can't square up your baseball then you're automatically gonna be doing successful and then the next thing that shows he's got great command is he has 99th percentile in chase rate. So this dude, like I said, this dude doesn't have exceptional stuff. Like there, he doesn't have extremely great stuff that's going to make you whiff at it or get behind on something like that. So he needs to time it up well and he needs to place it well and he needs to keep you off balance. And he does that great. You can just tell by the 99th percentile shows that he is one of the best at keeping hitters off balance and making them chase at pitches outside of the zone. He is honestly just watching him do it is very, very satisfying. It's one of my favorite things now to do in baseball. Now, if you add all those things up, and the f- you add up, you add up, you add all three of those things I mentioned about like the about the baseball spot having the hundred percentile and walk percentage, barrel percentage, and ninth percentile and chase rate. You add all those things up, and you're destined to be one of the best pitchers in this league. He doesn't allow free bases. He doesn't allow many wood hook balls. Hasn't allowed a single homer this entire year in over twenty innings pitched and makes people chase at an elite clip. And you add on the fact whenever he allows hard hit balls, they just go directly into the ground, given that he has a 4.4 average launch angle most of balls. I mean, that's destined to be one of the best pitchers in baseball. And no wonder he's getting some of the best numbers in baseball. And honestly, I didn't know about Mantiply until a couple of weeks ago. And watching him pitch is one of the best things in baseball, as long as he isn't destroying your favorite team, which he might be because he hasn't allowed more than one run this entire year. His funky delivery and slower velo sinker ball makes him feel like an oddity in a style of baseball as almost all relievers throwing 95 plus and less and less of these guys having funny set deliveries and stuff like that. Now, Joe Mantiply is now my favorite oddball player, and honestly, he should be yours too if you love pitching. He's a great story of perseverance and will as he spent so much time in the minors trying to hone his crap, show show to the people at the big levels that he deserves it. And every single time he got a chance, he floundered. He would not do well. He allowed homers, he would get hard, and he'd go sent back down to the minors. And then finally, finally, he was able to send it up with the Diamondbacks on a team that desperately needed pitches so they gave him a shot and he took it and he has not let it go and honestly it's just it's so great to see you know it's kind of like uh the the Nestor Cortez and the New York Yankees who just kept failing and failing and failing kept sending the minors league getting wave cuts all that and now he's finally got together and watching these two guys and Mantiply and Nestor it's just awesome to see it's a great story in baseball and honestly, no matter how the rest of his career goes, I will be rooting for this guy now. His wacky yet beautiful style of baseball is so amazing to watch. I wish him nothing but the best. And honestly, I hope he continues this great success. He could be a potential trade bait for a new, for a contending team that needs to add a bullpen arm. And honestly, whatever he does in this world, I'm going to be rooting for him now because watching him pitch has just been so awesome. Honestly, if you guys ever get bored and you're watching a baseball game you don't know who to check out, make sure to turn on the Diamondbacks game in the late innings and see if he's on the mound because you're going to want to watch that. Have a lovely day as this is Talking About Sports signing off.